Hello and welcome back to the English at Penrice YouTube channel. In this video we're going to be having a look at your GCSE language paper 2 with an overview of the exam paper and what to expect from each of the questions. Paper 2 is the Writers, Viewpoints and Perspectives paper, uh, the non-fiction paper and we're going to have a look at both sections today. For paper two, you're given two non-fiction sources. Remember in paper one, you're only given one source to have a look at, but because you're going to be doing some comparison as part of the reading section, you've got two sources to read and understand as part of this paper. Again, important information is given by the exam board at the top of both sources, so make sure you read it really carefully before beginning to read the sources. As in paper one, you've got two sections. Section A is your reading section. There's four questions on that section A. And section B is your writing section. Just the one question this time. Um, section A and section B, as in paper one, uh, you're advised to spend 45 minutes on. Let's start by having a look at the section A reading questions. Question one is the true statements question. You're told which source and which lines from that source to get your information from. And you need to choose the four statements from the list that you know to be true. You'll have read those lines really carefully and be absolutely sure that the statements you think are true um, are supported by the things that you've read before shading in the circles for the four boxes. Question two asks you to think about a very specific focus that's linked across two texts. For example, in this question two, the focus is the different boards used by the surfers. You're required to write a summary of what you understand about that focus across source A and source B. So you're comparing a specific idea from those two sources. What you must do for this question as well as comparing these ideas, is to support your, your ideas with textual detail, so quotations, and make inferences about the quotes that you choose. Your teachers might have told you to use an SQI structure for your paragraphs, a statement, quotation, inference structure. And this will ensure that you cover all the elements of the mark scheme for question two. Question three is your language analysis question. You're going to be asked, how does the writer use language to describe a particular uh, focus? In this case, the surfers and the sea. You're going to be thinking about the language methods and the word and phrasing choices that the writer's using, and you're gonna analyze those in detail. For question four, you're asked to compare the writer's viewpoints, their perspectives, and the methods they use to present those perspectives. So again, you will be given a focus. Usually it's more broad than question two. So in this case, we have surfing. You're going to be looking at how the writers feel and how they view that particular uh, focus. And then you're going to be supporting those viewpoints with the methods the writers use to convey them. You can talk about language methods, uh, structural methods and tone for this one. Again, supporting all of your ideas with quotations and analysing those. OK, and on to section B, question five. There's only one option in this paper uh, rather than the um, two tasks that you get to choose from in paper one. You'll always be given a statement, um, an interesting statement or a controversial statement with more than one part. So there's lots of things for you to think about uh, before you start writing. You'll be asked to write in a certain form. So it could be an article, a letter, a speech, a leaflet or an essay. And you'll be asked to either explain a point of view, um, argue, persuade or advise on a certain topic. As with paper one, 
you've got 24 marks for your content and organization and 16 marks for your technical accuracy. So you're looking at 40 marks in total. This is an extended response, so you should plan before you begin. And the exam board have uh, noted that you don't have to respond to every single part of the statement. In fact, it's a good idea to choose one key part of the statement to form a really clear line of argument. And you develop that through your extended response. Make sure you leave some time to proofread at the end because you never know where you might pick up some marks for uh, technical accuracy, perhaps, um, if you've managed to edit something that you spotted was incorrect. That's your overview of English Language Paper 2. Sign up to the channel for lots more videos to support your revision for your English Language and Literature papers.